Welcome back to Tide Pod, presented by Tide Illustrated. Jack Knowlton and Tony Sakalas back with you guys for another week and another week gone until football season returns. Still have a long grind to go there through the summer, but we're going to have plenty of stuff starting on the recruiting trail, Tony, with the class of 2025. But we're actually going to flash forward to start the news this week. That's because Alabama landed two 2026 commits, got its 2026 class going in. Uh, pretty emphatic fashion, back-to-back days, back-to-back commits. Uh, so we had on the 18th of May, uh, Jamar- Jamarian Gordon, a cornerback uh, in-state guy out of Jackson High School committed. And then just one day later, another cornerback committed, Dorian Barney uh, out of Georgia, another defensive back. Uh, two great four-star prospects here to start the 2026 class. And we're, we're going to dive into to each of them, or both of them specifically, a little bit. But... You know, given that it's it's, you know, May 2024, we're not even into the you know, we don't even have the 2025 class set in stone yet. Tony, how big is it for Alabama to land, you know, not only two commits, get the ball rolling on the 2026 class, but, you know, two four star guys, very talented, uh, you know, possible pieces of the secondary in the future. Yeah, two four-star guys, two top 150 guys, and then two people from the South. This is not a good uh, look for the the uh, Kalen DeBoer can't recruit the South crowd. Um, I, I think this is just a, you know, he can, Kalen DeBoer continues to disprove the notion that he's not going to be a good recruiter. Uh, these are two really big gets at, you know, a position that Alabama is, you know, continuously reloading at. Um, you know, you saw that the need for secondary and how low those numbers were. Now, I think, you know, you're adding to that class, you're, you're, main, you're, you're, you're kind of making sure that it doesn't get like it was earlier um this offseason and I, I just think that you're bringing in a lot of talent it's a position group where you need a lot of talent so it's a great way to start um and and look i think it's a it, it's great for momentum um wasn't it uh didn't they kind of recruit each other didn't uh gordon kind of help and recruit barney or like i know he teased something right or was, was so, he helping or was he, yeah well i'll give out some some insider information we came to learn here at tide illustrated away uh, we had a conversation with Dorian Barney. He actually does not. He has never talked with Jamarian Gordon. This oh, okay. was just pure old fashioned recruiting on Twitter, seeing another guy with Alabama as a top 12 option. And it happened to work out that that he decided I actually am going to recruit the next day. But either way, it worked out. So, yeah, that's always, you know, you want your first recruit in the class to be an outspoken guy. You know, I mean, uh, I remember, I mean, this didn't really age well for uh for Alabama, but when they had that class with Ajay Hall and it had been a while, uh, they, could, they couldn't get people in that class and it, they, they kind of had that slump and then he was sitting there and recruiting for them. And, you know, especially if you don't have a quarterback, until you get a quarterback in your class, you want those first few guys to be, you know, really kind of energetic, uh, you know, kind of recruiters a little bit. And I think when you get your quarterback in the class, then he kind of takes over that role and becomes your recruiting guy just because I think people kind of lean to towards him you know i think pretty much i wonder if the board's gonna be the same way but pretty much you take a quarterback in every single class um so but until you get that guy to rally behind i think it's always really important to have people that are willing to grow reach out on on twitter and and, and you know help out a little bit with recruiting and um it, it only helps when that person's also a a high four-star prospect as well Definitely. And it only helps that person who is doing the recruiting, like endear themselves to the fan base quicker because you just have this guy who's chronically online and that their name gets, you know, more synonymous with Alabama when they do commit than they are doing the recruiting. So, um, yeah, it it ended up being a little bit of a coincidence, but you're right about Gordon, you know, smart to be out there recruiting for for his, you know, now current team that he's committed to. And let's go into both of these guys a little bit and we'll start with Gordon. Um, obviously, like you mentioned, you know, the narrative is, is sort of disintegrating before our eyes here that Kalen DeBoer can't recruit in state and can't recruit in the South. Uh, you know, he has a team of people to help him, to help him do that. And Gordon and in state get from Jackson, Alabama, Jackson high school, very small high school, about 400 kids. Uh, you know, one of those traditional, I was talking to their coach and he was, he described it as one of those traditional towns where, you know, everyone goes to the stadium on Friday when they hear that a guy's getting offered from Alabama kind of turns him into a, a celebrity a little bit, but he does wind up uh, committing and, you know, so he's six feet, 190 pounds. He's definitely a, a bigger corner uh, and, you know, can even slide into, 
the the nickel and even the safety position possibly at the next level. Um, and this this kind of you know illustrates a, a trend, Tony. We've seen this in the 2025 class where Alabama seems to be targeting these kind of athletes, and you know whether it's guys who play both sides of the ball or a guy like Gordon who's you know maybe a little bit oversized for the corner position, but could fit potentially in the in the safety or nickel position or could play corner. You're seeing these sort of multi-tool players that Alabama is starting to target, and that's what they're getting here in in Jamarian Gordon. Yeah, and, and I think you know you, you want that guy that can drop down and play the husky position or, or play safety, and um, it, you know having that guy can help you get it on the field, uh, can help you get on the field quicker. You know, you you got a guy like Red Morgan who is a safety but can play that uh, nickel role, and look now he was taking first team reps right off the bat. Uh, this spring. So being able to kind of drop down there and, and play that, I think is really big. So, um, you know, and then to get somebody, you know, from, from in state that can do that, you know, like you said, it, it, it is a big deal. Um, but I think you're going to, I mean, you really are going to a four, two, five setup at Alabama pretty much ran everything out of the nickel um, previously. You know, that's kind of like what you have to do in a modern defense, but you're going to want those guys that can slot in at, you know, safety or play in the box and in the just so you can kind of be more versatile in what you can do. So, yeah, I think you're going to see a lot more of that. Um, you know, you get your true cornerbacks in there and it's hard to find those, those true elite cornerbacks, but then when you get to their kind of people that can play safety, I think you're going to want that guy to be a little bit more versatile. Yeah, definitely. A, a little bit more too on, on, uh, you know, on Alabama's on Gordon on his recruit, he's the number fifty-three player in the in the class currently, number six corner. So you know, like we said at the top, a talented guy. Um, he's coming from a, a, a Jackson program that you know. I, I'll just say this: it seems like they're starting a, a little bit of a, a strong pipeline. Uh, they have a couple other guys that got mentioned to me. The headliner of which is a guy named Xavier Crowell, who's actually all the way still in the class of twenty twenty-seven. Uh, but he already has over, I believe, two dozen offers or at least a dozen offers, including Alabama. So, you know, you might be opening up a nice pipeline here with with Jamarian Gordon coming in the door. They have uh, their quarterback is a four star recruit in the 2026 class. His name is Landon Duckworth. He's committed to South Carolina right now. Uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe Gordon does some some, you know, home home recruiting, if you will, and and tries to get those guys, you know, on, on Alabama's radar because. It seems like it's a talent for as small of a high school as it is. I was impressed with how much talent seems to be, you know, kind of stemming from there. But for sure. um, yeah. yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's definitely a good pickup. Uh, his cousin is Nehemiah Pritchett, who played for Auburn uh, a while ago. So he's got some NFL DNA in there. He just got drafted. But a nice get. This is a, another Gordon. big get. Right. Because, I mean, if you have yeah. Auburn in the family, you know, I mean, it's in your competing, you know, in state, you, you want to make that presence. I think that's a big deal. Um to kind of to win one of those guys over, you know, and it's, I know that a lot of people have a uh, family on both sides, but you know, when you get into Alabama, but yeah, I think that's a, that's a big deal. No doubt. Also, another uh, thing, Jack, then, point out, was it Maurice Lindquist for both of these guys as the, as the main? Yeah, I was going to, I was going to get to him when well. we got to yeah. Barney. Yeah. Uh, we can, we can get to that now too, with Dorian Barney, who's just the other one, uh, you know, another corner. He's the 107th player in the class. Uh, so another 150 guy, like Tony mentioned, Number 11 corner, um, another big get. And Tony mentioned Maurice Linguist. You know, obviously, Kalen DeBoer, you know, you, you give him overarching credit, uh, you know, for having the staff that he's got. But the, the man who should be patting himself on the back for both of these guys is Maurice Linguist. He uh, was at the forefront of, of both of their commitments, um, went to Dorian Barney's spring game, I believe, just a couple days before he ended up committing. So just huge praise for him. Uh, you know, that's already proved to be a, a nice, you know, addition with Garrett, you know, a nice guy to have on Kalen DeBoer staff when it comes to recruiting Doran Barney, the second edition, Tony for Alabama one day after Jamarian Gordon. Yeah. And Barney is a, what, what is he like six, one or something like that? Um, he's he a, is six, one, one seventy. Yeah. Six, one, one seventy. That's, you know, he's, so he's got that good size for the cornerback position. I'm sure, uh, Lindquist is going to appreciate that. Um, obviously Maurice Lindquist for people still getting used to the staff is the cornerbacks coach at Alabama. So, um, yeah, I think that, you know, um, th that's what you want in that cornerback position. Alabama has always had those tall cornerbacks. It was an essential thing under Nick Saban. We'll see if Kane Womack still, like prioritizes the, I mean, I guess a lot of people want that big cornerback, but it was almost a, an essential thing for Nick Saban. He didn't really like to have the people really under six foot. Um, 
we'll see how how big of a deal it is, but it's still nice to have, you know, I mean, Alabama fans are used to having those imposing cornerbacks that were just super athletic and kind of freaks uh, in, in terms for their size. Yeah, I I, I I use the term rangy when I think of Dorian Barney. He's just, you know, he's he's got that length uh, you, that kind of you'd like to see in your corner, uh, in your cornerback. Like I said, you know, he released his top 12 less than a month ago. Uh, he did. He has visited Alabama. Like I said, Linguist has visited him. So this has been a, a long brewing relationship, but it was definitely unexpected him dropping the tomorrow with the eyes emoji. And, you know, then the speculation kind of began, but uh, Alabama definitely or ends up picking up him, and I'll just I'll just say say this with linguist as well, and and kind of the secondary. Uh, in obviously, linguist has gotten ahead with the 2026 class. Amongst 2025 recruits, I've heard a lot of good things about Colin Hitchler as well, uh, mm-hmm. who works with the secondary. So, you know, you mentioned that bridge. Obviously, Saban, that's whole his whole thing with the DBs. You've got Hitchler and Linguist in now that, you know, it seems like it's going to be a pretty good bridge. Obviously, that's a tough gap to make up. I'm not saying it's going to be, you know, as, you know, decorated as it was in the secondary under Nick Saban. But you've got two guys who at least appear to be, uh, you know, recruiting well. I don't know if you have anything more to to add to that. But Colin Hitchler, Linguist definitely seem to deserve a lot of credit. both seem like great guys. I mean, you know, we've actually gotten to talk to to both of them. They both seem like high energy guys, Um, but also just kind of like I don't know if you can be like they, they have energy but they're also kind of laid back at the same time I don't know how to like I can see that there's like they're they're into it and that they bring a lot of energy to and passion but at the same time I think they're very relatable and they're not just you know you know like I, th- I feel like recruits are going to feel at ease and, and kind of like relatable with them so I can imagine them being pretty good on the recruiting trail as well they seem kind of cool guys that you'd like want to talk to uh you know as for anything else I'd like to add uh, you know, you know how much I love those top twelve lists, Jack. <laughs> 12, yeah, I, I have, I am. We are those. both anti, anti top schools. If it's nothing below top, or it's if it's anything more than a top five, I, yeah, and I find then, it. Yeah, tough it to means it means nothing. You might as well just list. <laughs> which, an which again, conference. yeah, that that's what makes it so surprising that you then you have a top twelve and it's not a. You know, many. I think people are expecting that that initial announcement was going to be okay. Maybe he'll release a top three, and then you can get a little more serious, but. Yeah, I love go from the, the top, top 12. To I love the top 12 when they don't even choose a school in that 12. That's mm-hmm. my favorite. That's 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 yeah, that's total class right there. <laughs> Just trying yeah. to make between our heads spin between that and uh fans saying who to transfers, those are my two big pet peeves in there the offseason. Is, is so elaborate those top, the comments. Top whatever lists and then fans saying who to to recruits that they obviously know or recruits or former players or whatever that they obviously know the answer to those are those are my two big pet peeves so yeah just a little insight for the people listening <laughs> yeah put those all in the comments now we can we can really drive tony Ooh. crazy if we want but who um but yeah so you know again speaks to a bit more of a surprise there the last nugget i'll share on barney uh, after talking with this coach um he told me uh, his coach at Peachtree Ridge, where he's at in Georgia, uh, before prior to joining there was at St. Thomas Aquinas. That might be if you're familiar in recruiting as a school you might know in Florida. A lot of good talent went there. He told me Barney is the most second most skilled corner he's ever worked with. Uh, number one was a guy called Asante Samuel Jr., who if you don't know who that is, he went to Florida State and is now a very good corner with the Los Angeles Chargers. So High company uh, to keep, I think, if you're Dorian Barney. Am I mixing up schools or is King Mac from there? King Mac is from there. Yes. Yeah. Good Good connection. Yeah. Yep. I, I did ask uh, this coach at St. Thomas Aquinas was not King Mac's coach, so there was no wow. overlap I mean, now there. has got a, but... a string of players from St. Thomas Aquinas. But yep. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you might know that school, but Asante Samuel Jr. feels like good, pretty good company to keep if you're Dorian Barney. Sure. Yeah. So... Mm-hmm. Again, uh, two recruits, Jamarian Gordon, Dorian Barney, 2026 class off to a rock and start, thanks to uh, Mo Linguist. Let's segue for a second, Tony. Uh, we're going to finish the show. We want to look back at a column you wrote, so I won't I won't reveal that now, but let's talk some basketball for a quick second. And, you know, I kind of feel like it's a, you know, I feel like a broken record a little bit when we bring this up, but it's, you know, it feels somewhat necessary given what Alabama's reloading with. Mark Sears, Jaron Stevenson, if you don't know by now, I don't know how you don't know by now, 
They are going through the pre-draft process, and at the time you're listening to this, they have exactly a week to decide. The deadline to withdraw from the draft is next Wednesday, May 29th. Uh, I believe it's technically 10:59 East or Central because it's 11:59 Eastern is when they have to take their names out by. A um, couple things since we last spoke. Mark Sears was in the NBA draft combine. Uh, had some interesting measurables. Didn't appear to wow too many people. And then there, you know, so in the, the way the NBA combine works, there are scrimmage games. You play in two of them. Mark Sears was unable to participate in the first one. Got a, a, a late injury and ended up missing that. Second combine scrimmage, he did play. Uh, I didn't see his minutes, but he finished with 11 points, one assist two steals and actually five fouls, a rare, uh, a rare foul fest for Mark Sears. I felt like he wouldn't foul out of too many Alabama games, but two for seven from the field, two for three from three, five for six from the free throw line. Um, I could get into some mock draft stuff, Tony, but you know, I think you and I are both in the same boat as of now from, you know, after going through the combine still feels like we lean pretty closely toward it is a triumphant return to Tuscaloosa for Mark Sears. I would say so. I know we had, yeah, I, I know we had seen some mock drafts where he was getting drafted in the early 30s, and I think if he knew, if he knew he could get drafted there, I think he'd definitely leave. But I'm not sure how accurate those mock drafts were. Um, mm. One thing we will not have to see any more uh, Jalen Brunson. Uh, it feels like every time Jalen Brunson had a big game, people would be like, "Oh, there's Mark Sears." Like that, that yeah. And that now that the Knicks are out of the playoffs, maybe uh, we will see less of that but uh i guess we only have another week anyways but i think he's coming back i think that um that size is gonna that size was always gonna be the big hurdle for him you know with him being just a shade over 5 10 uh you know i mentioned it in the past it's not like he's you know shrunk or anything he's been playing at that size so if you like him at that size you, you know it, it shouldn't be an issue but i i think when it comes down to it, I think that's probably a, a, a you know going to be a big obstacle for him to overcome, and I think that's probably going to cause enough NBA teams to pass. So uh, that's Alabama's gain. Uh, you know, you hate it for for Mark, who you, you you wanted to see him be able to live out his dream, but I think he'll have a chance to you know um, really just kind of go on a new dream here, and I think he could really become the the best player in program history. I don't think that that's a stretch to say if he has another year like he did last year. Um, you know, shoot, he'll be, I think he's going to enter the season as, wouldn't you say Jack, like top five best players in college basketball. I mean, mm -hmm. um, he's definitely going to be one of the favorites for that, you know, for player of the year. I mean, he's going to be on those lists, but whether or not he wins it or not, I think, you know, that's kind of dependent on some things, but look, he's also, you know, um, you saw him compete with Dalton connect and it's, it was almost like, well, he's not going to do it because, you know, Alabama is just behind, uh, but if Alabama wins the SEC, like it's, it's going to be expected to, and he puts up similar numbers to, to last year, I think you're going to see some player of the year award honors and, and um, maybe even some national player of the year award honors for, for Mark Sears. Um, it's one of those things where like, does the supporting cast going to hurt him statistically because there's so many other options or is it going to help him because there'll be so many other options and you can't, you know, really guard against him. But regardless, He's going to be big for Alabama if he comes back, and Alabama is going to be just a juggernaut if uh, you know if he comes back. So, uh, yeah, I I, I, definitely. I think you speak to something you know interesting that that I've noticed in the discourse to Mark Sears in this pre-draft process, where you know pretty much every national interview I've seen him do, which has only been a couple to be fair, the the main the leading question to this poor kid who you know obviously has NBA dreams is. Hey, you know how good this team's going to be if you come back? And yeah. you know that that definitely seems to be the narrative that, you know, everyone is driving home is hey, like look at this crown or jewel in the crown that you could have, you know, with this kid who like you said is not getting mocked. It it was very interesting to notice and I, I went on a radio show earlier on Thursday or on Tuesday and, and tried to articulate this. I I'm very plugged into NBA draft stuff and I like looking at mocks. The people who have Mark, you know, mocked in the 30s like in the couple of drafts we've seen i think are people who are larger you know kind of college basketball fans and just like i've noticed mark sears has a lot of strong like neutral support you know to the point where it's like it's probably unrealistic to have him that high but you know i think i think there are people that genuinely think he's that talent like there are you know there there is a lot of support for mark sears away from alabama circles which i think 
you know, if you're an Alabama fan, you can appreciate a little bit. But I've just the discourse love, around him is interesting. I love the awkward situation that fans get into of like trying to politely make the case that their player is not good enough for the NBA or needs another year. It's the same. It's the same with Alabama football fans too. It's like where like you don't want to say anything bad because it's your favorite player, but you obviously like don't want them. To, you, you run into it every year with with maybe football, and they're like, you know, oh, this guy has this this than this and then at the same time you know you obviously you're saying that as a fan that because you want him back because you know how much of a difference maker he can be so that that's been kind of amusing i always like to kind of to follow uh or to, to watch people kind of squirm through that but uh yeah i think that's part of it too is it's it's you know you you look at that um from a college you know if you are a fan of college basketball or, or if you're an alabama fan you see how much of an impact he can make on the game it's just projecting that to the pro level i think that's where there's some divide and, you know, it it's really murky. does come down to like just size and athleticism and just like, you know, is he going to be able to do that? It's, you know, in, in a league where everyone's just, you know, on average, just bigger, you know, and, uh, you know, is he's going to have to, sh you know, shoot even farther away. And so, you know, if he, can he shoot over people if he's, you know, that small? There's a lot, a lot of things that come into play and it's just uh I don't know. Um, I, I, I'm pulling for him, and I hope that you know he puts together another year at Alabama, and that he can come out and prove people wrong because I, I think he can play, and I think I'd like to see him at least get a shot at the NBA one day. But um, we'll just have yeah. to see. Agreed. I, I mean, I think the simplest point you can make, and this is you know when you're kind of learning about what the NBA draft and the difference between because you see this in basketball, where not always the best college players are NBA players, and you ask why, and it's like, you know every guard in the NBA was Mark Sears in college or in high school. Yeah. So, you know, that's the level you're trying to make the jump to and the jump beyond to actually stick on a roster. It's not an easy thing to do. You know, I know that's, you know, sounds pretty mundane of a, you know, an argument, but that's, you know, that's how it is isn't at the end of the day. Um, so to be interesting again, you know, that's, that's just our feeling. We're not NBA draft insiders. We don't know what these teams are saying to Mark Sears. They could be saying very good things that he wants to hear and and you know that'll that'll sway his decision ultimately but again next wednesday is the date he has to decide jaron stevenson's another interesting one uh there's there's been some pretty good discourse around jaron stevenson uh that i've seen there was a video i know that came out uh where he made a bunch of threes in a row uh and and you know people were kind of like oh look at this 610 guy that can shoot a little bit you know he had some shooting struggles a year one at the college level um it's still, and again, it almost, you know, you, you almost want to push back on your own takes when you see things like that, because, you know, for so long since he also entered, I've just been saying to myself, it's just a test the waters thing, see where he's at, measure himself up to the level he, you know, I know he wants to be at, but you know, it, it is interesting to see some sort of positivity around his stock, but not a guy as well that I've seen uh, mocked anywhere or put in any, any, any drafts being taken it's anyway. It's kind of like the reverse of Mark. You know, you've got one guy mm -hmm. with like NBA level production that doesn't necessarily have an NBA level body. And you guys you have one guy that doesn't necessarily have NBA level production in a very projectable NBA body. And I think that's the reason why, you know, there is some discourse over Darren Stevenson is because once he develops, I think he can be a very serious NBA prospect. You look at a guy that's 6'10 that can shoot, even if he's not, you know, everybody bumps up the the, the height in college, but even if let's just say he's like, even like 6'9, you know, like the way, the way he can shoot, the way he can play the post, you know, if he, you know, kind of polishes up his game, maybe gets a little bit stronger, um, being able to go outside and, and, and shoot. What was the game that he, uh, was it I'm trying to think of what, was it UNC, the one that he went off? Uh, I think it was Clemson that he played. Oh, was it Clemson? Yeah, it was Clemson that he went off. Okay, I get it mixed up. But, yeah, like, you know, you, you see that and, uh, you know, it kind of shows you your potential. If you're looking for a breakout star, I think Jaron Stevenson could be one of those guys. Obviously, with uh, Grant Nelson coming back and Cliff Amore coming in, he's probably not going to start, but I think he's going to play steady minutes. You know, I think he's going to come in for those two guys and, you know, uh, um, really add to the depth of, of, you know, Alabama's front court. Um, and I think part of it too is let's see if he can muscle up a bit too, and not just be a, a three-point shooter, but also add elements to his game because he's got the size to do that. If he, if he you know, kind of adds that strength to the game. Yeah, definitely. He's, you know, it's it's a case where, and you mentioned the the playing time. I think that promise had to be made because there's too much intrigue with him, and and there would have been 
if he would have entered the transfer portal, there would have been, you know, oh, suitors for, sure. for him. Yeah. I mean, you know, he could have gone, obviously the very easy link could have been right back to North Carolina. They just lost Armando. They caught their big. He was a guy who appeared to be a large reason why Stevenson didn't end up going there. Cause you know, that's a, that's obviously a hard thing to compete against, but yeah, it's, it's that, that promise I think had to be made that he's going to get some big minutes next year, because if he, like you said, if he's going to combine all those things together and get the production that, uh, you know, he needs to, to couple with his, his NBA frame. Uh, I think that's where, I think that's where you're going to see, or that's, that's what needs to happen for him. So, yeah, it's, it's um, also a yeah. testament to, uh, to Nate Oates style too. I mean, it's, it's, it's his system and, and, you know, his development as well, that, you know, you get a guy that knows that he's probably not going to start and still believes in the system and believes how he can progress and play in that system and, you know, how that will better his game enough that, you know, you're a high talent kid like Stevenson and you're still willing to stick with it in, in order to be in that system. I think that's a that, that's a big testament to what Alabama is building is that, you know, it's not just about uh, being a blue blood or you, they, they've proven, you know, time after time, like just how much this system means to the recruits. I mean, Look, you got a guy like Stevenson who, you know, chose them over a blue blood in, in North Carolina. And then you've got, you know, the reports that uh, Cliff Amori turned down, you know, what was it, $2 million to come to Alabama? Um, so that's not just about NIL. And it's, you know, obviously not just about playing time because you're seeing some of these guys come and they're not going to be starters, but they're still going to factor. But they're, you know, so it, it really is the system. It's not, you know, Alabama throwing a lot of money or Alabama promising playing time. It's really, you know, uh, recruits buying into what Alabama is building and wanting to be a part of that uh, recruits or transfers or whatever. Um, and I think that's, that's, you know, huge when you look at it, because there's a lot of other factors that you normally say, okay, well, you know, and not to say that it's cheating to do that, you know, but like, you know, you'd be like, oh, well, that's why they got this guy. Cause he knows he can go and start, or that's why they got this guy. Cause they paid out, you know, out the wazoo for him. But, you know, um, to, to just get people because they believe in their potential. I think that's, uh, worth its weight in gold when you're when you're trying to build you know like a contender every year yeah no doubt about it and I, I think this team is going to be so fun next year i think with or without uh mark sears it's just going to be it's just going to be a, a fascinating a fascinating watch and an entertaining watch and uh it will be a blow yeah it will be a blow if mark sears doesn't come at this point it will be a blow, a blow to momentum. they'll be fine i think they'll be a good team but like that will be a huge gut punch because I think at the moment we were talking about it like Mark's already said that he is coming back. You know, imagine if yeah. we have to go on this podcast next week and uh, sorry guys, you know, words and then start talking and backtracking all these things and you know, like it will be a, a, like a huge gut punch. I think then the conversation will be like, okay, well, what are they bringing in? Because they'll have all this extra nil money. You know, then that would be the the next question is okay, how can they kind of replace Mark Sears? Blah blah blah. But uh, yeah, like they'll be fine with or without, but it will. Let's not pretend like it won't be a total gut punch if uh, the best player on the team leaves. Totally, yeah, totally. You're you are you are right. Uh, but we'll see. So yeah, by this time next week, uh, you will know if Mark Sears is back or not. Or I guess technically it'd be Thursday. You assume there would be an announcement before. It's like, come on, Mark. Like I feel like at this time next week we should know. <laughs> Yeah, they'll see if they do some sort of video. I'm sure we'll get ninety thousand uh, Preston Murphy tweets. So just be on the lookout for those in the yeah. meantime, because yeah, he'll he'll be tweeting. But no, they probably already have uh, a video played up right now. Like they probably already have like a hype video. Yeah, if they don't, they some just, sort they, of, they should start on it. Yeah, some sort of some sort of mark announcement, but we'll see. Um, Tony, let's finish the show with uh, on a little bit of a fun note. You wrote a a column recently, um, and obviously, you know, and you talked about this in the intro to the column. It's a it's a it's a slower time. Obviously, recruiting is is recruiting, and that's going to get really interesting. We're going to talk, you know, about that in June with official visits, and there will be commits, and there's commitment dates set, and and stuff like that. Um, but you know, you you wrote your column, and and you decided to talk about a little something different. Look ahead to the fun that will be this upcoming football season, and you ranked uh, Alabama's away trips uh, this upcoming season, and I thought I thought it was a fun list. Um, I didn't really prepare it. I, I wasn't going to read them all through for you. I'll, I'll just toss it to you if you want to, I don't know, run through your Let's list, talk about the, the highlights. Okay. People, so people know. Like, like no, no, no like, like, it, like, so they like, on the schedule, right? So it's Wisconsin. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, I'll pull it up. I'll pull up the schedule. Wisconsin, I can do a 
by memory, I almost. It's Wisconsin, then Vanderbilt, and so Nashville, then okay. uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Then you've got uh, Baton Rouge, which is LSU, and then Norman, which is Oklahoma, right? That's that's your five. I think you're right. I think, it's, I think that's the right order, yeah. Yes. Wisconsin. Yes. At Wisconsin, at Vanderbilt, at Tennessee, at LSU, at Oklahoma. So that's how right. it is in order. So you ranked those away days. Uh, which one did you have ranked number one and why? So I was going between, you know, there's a few things I tried to consider. Like the point I made during the column is that like you can't, like it's never been more expensive to be an Alabama fan. You know, like you had the Rose Bowl trip, then you've had the – uh, the surprise run to the final four and like everything's like a million miles all out west like, yeah and then now you're expected to just go up to wisconsin and then you know oklahoma and like all these places and then you have the playoff uh which could send you to like some random town that you're gonna have to pay for you know a hotel in some college city uh unexpectedly so that's gonna be really expensive <laughs> so i mean like yeah it, it's tough and like you know i know a lot of alabama fans have some deep pockets but at the same time, a lot of them don't, and uh, that, you know it's, it's tough on the common man. So I, I was ranking them <laughs> in case you did have to make some cuts. You know, the, so uh, the number one I had was uh, it was kind of controversial because I talked to some people and they were like, "This is like my number four or five. But I had Tennessee one, and I said the, the reason why I had it it's probably the most important game on, on Alabama's schedule. It's a rivalry game. Um, I know the Georgia game is big, but that Tennessee game starts a three game set between or the three games, you know, run of Tennessee home against Mizzou and then uh, away to LSU. I know you have a bye week before LSU, but still it's three straight games. Th those games will how Alabama does in those games, I think it determines if they make the playoff or not. You know, so I, I think that that's huge. It's going to be at Tennessee. Well, obviously we're doing road trips, but, you know um I, I i think with with nico um i'm not gonna say his last name but the the quarterback for tennessee <laughs> nico l do you got it does no does, does, does his last name starts with an l right i am I? I am yeah I, I don't i don't got it but yeah yeah well anyways nico, nico. um but yeah i uh i think he could be really good and that could be tough I, you know we talked about alabama secondary um it's reloaded secondary i think you know, oh wait it's gonna be I, I do have it. Ia Maleva, Maleva, Maleva. Yeah, Maleva. I knew what it was. I just didn't know how to say it, Jack. I was a... They have a pronunciation. Tennessee, shout out to Tennessee as a former, you know, I did a lot of broadcasts. They have a pronunciation guide right there. So we will get I used to know it. When I used to know how to say it. Like, I, I like. Ia Maleva. Ia Maleva. I guarantee it's yeah, not that. I got it. No, it's, that's it's, what it says. That's how it says in the pronunciation guide. I feel like you're not reading the, uh, the pronunciation guide right. Because I've heard it before. All right. I'm believing myself. Nico L. All right. Sorry, I interrupted you enough. But anyways, Nico, um, I think that, uh, that that's going to be a huge game. And then number two, um, I have Wisconsin because I just think that the Wisconsin game, it's, there's the novelty effect of it. It's going to be uh, the board's first, you know, first real test. Obviously, I think this is like, I think this would be more fun. Like, let's, let's stop right now before I just go through and like bore everyone to death with mine. What's your number one? And we'll go number one, number one, number two, number two. Okay, so there, so I already gave away my number two. So okay. you go, you go like, yeah. your number one and your number two. So, you know, you're you're more well traveled in the SEC than I am. You've you've been covering Alabama for a while. I haven't I have only been now, including Bryant Denny, to three SEC stadiums for football. I have been to Athens in Georgia. I have been to uh for a field at Mizzou, and then now Bryant Denny. So uh from a pure intrigue standpoint. I think I'll put my number one. I don't want to cheat and put Madison because I've been there. I would probably put Baton Rouge one. I'm really excited to experience Baton Rouge. I just like I've heard all those all things about it. I'm excited to go to that stadium. I know how like crazy it gets in Death Valley. I would put that one just because I'm the most like excited, I think, to experience that for the first time. OK, now, yeah, my number two is Madison which I haven't been to. Obviously, you're pretty well-versed being from uh, Milwaukee. But um, I just think the novelty of going to that stadium, um, you might never get another chance to go to that stadium. I don't know if you will or not. It, college football is weird now. Um, yeah. you know, who They'll all be in one conference but, eventually. Yeah, so, so maybe you will. But, like, it's not, like, set in stone that you'll be able to cover it or to, to, to be able to go to it. So I say take advantage of it. Madison always gets put there, too, in, like, the top – 
five or even maybe I've even seen it in like the top three uh, mm-hmm. college towns. Uh, it's, it's like routinely up there, you know, to see the jump around. Uh, is it the fourth quarter that they do jump around? Right before the fourth quarter. Yep. Right before the fourth quarter. Like, yeah, I want to see that. That's great. It'll be early enough in the season that like, you know, I'm sure that they'll overhype this Wisconsin team. So it's going to be a great uh, environment. And, and look, I mean, this is the kind of games that we took for granted under Saban. And I still think that, you know, I expect uh, the board to go in and win those, but not every team goes and wins those games. And I think maybe this is a good, a good kind of like, you know, check on Alabama is like, is how different is life going to be? If they drop this Wisconsin one, I think you're going to see some panic of people just being like, oh gosh, this is what life's like without saving you going to lose the first uh, big test. So that, you know, that will be interesting to see how the board responds to it. Um, before we go on to number three, one thing else I had on my number one for Tennessee that I remember I wrote in the column is, you know, this is such a great rivalry and we're not exactly sure how the sec is going to be formulated you know we talked about you said that you know we might all be one conference we have the same schedule the the, the same uh eight games like schedule next year that's already been that's already came out but after that who's to say they don't go to you know a, a nine game schedule or, or something like that where tennessee doesn't you know get played every year so i mean just the take advantage of these trips to knoxville because they might not be an every year thing and I, this is such a great mm-hmm. game that you know enjoy it while it's still because college football is changing you can't take anything for granted i guess so uh I, I that's another reason i guess i would put tennessee at number one so i guess we're on number number three do you want to go first oh yeah i, I would have madison too as well also i'll, I'll throw, that's where i'll that's as far as i'll let it drop uh it's listen if you go to that game you're gonna go to probably the most picturesque place you can go to in the Midwest at that time of the year. It's a beautiful set town. It's I've talked Tony's ear off about it at this point. It's it'll be a it'll be a fantastic trip. You should take it. It's fun in the summer. I've I, we've talked to some people on our board. People want to do a, a twofer and go to the uh, Green Bay Packers are playing at home. I guess on that Sunday, so you can make a nice drive over to Green Bay if you want. Go to you know pro football atmosphere. I don't know how far uh, is Green I Bay. Think it'll be, from- Medicine. I don't remember off the top of my head, which is kind of embarrassing. Um, but it you can make it. You can make the trip. It's not it's doable. But yeah, it's it'll be fun. Jump around's fun. Um, especially when you're not in the student section, because when you're in the student section, it's kind of just a mosh pit. Uh they they're a little more tame in the in the, you know, layman folk. Definitely more tame in the press box. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, there's no jumping around in the press box, unfortunately, but it'll probably shake. So there's that. Cool. All right. Yeah. What's what's your number three? My number three was LSU. Um, look, if you t- took football out of it, like LSU would be number one. I think it's just the best mm-hmm. like place. The best. I mean, it, it's number one. Like like if if everything about it, like if you took the game away, because I guess I, I don't necessarily think it will be as good of a game as the normal Alabama LSU game. Uh, I think that like. Uh, I think LSU's just lost a lot. And I guess you could say Alabama's lost a lot and you don't know what they're going to be like without saving. So maybe it is. Um, but I, I, as a matchup, that's why I didn't have it as high as, you know, maybe like a Tennessee with that matchup. I think um, it'll still be a test for Alabama, but I don't think it's going to be quite that test. But regardless, I like Tiger Stadium. To me, that's the mecca of college football. Um, just the atmosphere, if it's a night game, it's just going to be electric. Like I've been to several big games time games yeah, i've been to in college i covered a a whiteout at penn state um i've seen you know the kyle uh kyle fields shake when they do the swing at uh texas a and i've been to the swamp i've you know i've seen tennessee they're all great i mean the, yeah i've been to notre dame you know they they're all great but i think there's something about tiger stadium on a on a saturday night it's just it's crazy and it's electric and there's just not that there's the vibe you get from that stadium is just really uh it's my favorite stadium to go to so uh that's all i couldn't let you talked about not letting wisconsin slip past and i couldn't let lsu mm-hmm. slip past even on what i think might be a you know i i i, I kind of think that the tigers might not be as good as what people are thinking that they might be but at the same time i, I still think that that's going to be a heck of a game and the food man uh, you know, you got great food at in Baton Rouge, but if you like want more of a party, you're probably like an hour away from New Orleans, and it's just <laughs> there. You, you you can't go you know a mile without running into a, a great you know Cajun restaurant over there. So, uh, 
Yeah, um, I'm excited about that one. If I could like, you know, like a part of me, you know, just from a pure, like if it was just me covering, I think that would be the one that I would choose to cover over all of them. You know, that's mm -hmm. the one I definitely want to go to. Um, but I tried to keep the the fans in mind as well. And so that's why it's not number one, because I feel like it would just perpetually be number one on my list. What was your, okay, so what's your got, three? I, I feel you've affirmed. Got, I've, you've got LSU I have, and Wisconsin off the board. Yeah. Yeah. A third, okay. I first of all, I feel a lot better about putting LSU one. Now I'm way more excited to go for the first time. So there you go. Um, three, I will go and and I I feel like I'm doing Knoxville a little bit dirty. And again, not a game day atmosphere that I've experienced. So I'll probably regret that once I go. But three, I'm gonna put Nashville, another place I guess I have been to. I've I've never been to a Vanderbilt game, but I just like. I still, the novelty of Nashville hasn't wore off on me yet. I still love Nashville. I like Broadway. It's just a fun place. I was there, obviously, in the spring for the basketball team uh, for the SEC tournament, and I've been to the SEC tournament a couple times. Don't I don't expect much at all from a Vanderbilt game, so I'm picking this purely because of the city vibes, and I will probably end up regretting that, but I do. I just love Nashville. It's, it's, I'm not another a country person like, at all, but... Another great food city. Great. Another yeah, great food great, city, great uh, music city, obviously, oh, literally, like, is the music yeah. city. Uh, but um, also a great uh, bachelorette party city. I feel like True. it's the, the bachelorette yes. party capital of the of the world. <laughs> I feel like there's probably, like, <laughs> a million bachelorette parties there a year or something like that. But, uh, um, no, that's a fun place. Um, I, I see it. I like no Knoxville a lot. Like, yeah, I, I do think you're kind of doing Knoxville dirty. And I think just the, the game, the Alabama Vanderbilt game is going to be so garbage. And right. that yeah, so that... garbage. And like, really, that's just a test. The reason why it's number three is just a testament to to Nashville. Like, I don't know. That's mm -hmm. the only thing that game has. Going that's it. Yeah, Nashville. that's it. In fact, don't even go to the game. Go to the game for like a quarter and then just hang out. In yeah. Nashville go to but, yeah go out on broadway and just enjoy yeah. it um but yeah all right so number four your number four yeah so my number four is it's kind of going to be repetitive but i actually probably did norm and then my best friend is from from oklahoma but um i did oklahoma a little bit dirty by putting nashville ahead and i'll spare you guys the same speech i just made because it's pretty much the same reasons look i don't really yeah. even care if you stay the whole game Nashville is just fun. You should go as many times as you want. I realize that you're going to be right back there for the SEC basketball tournament. And you'll probably be there for a few days because Alabama's probably going to go far. Don't care. Go twice. It's just a fun city. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's close. I mean, it's like what? Like a it's four like hours, right? Four hour drive. Yeah. Like that's. Yeah. yeah. So Don't I mean, like there. it's not an expensive trip. So I mean, like, like if you're trying to make cuts. That was the whole point of this exercise, right? I don't think Nashville should be one of the cuts. It's just an easy one. And the ticket won't be expensive either. I mean, you want to factor that in. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be too hard to get a ticket there. And the crazy thing is I've only covered, I think, what, one or two games there. It's like, I think I've only covered one actually there. I've done some other, obviously covered some stuff in Nashville before. But um, the, uh, the, thing, the crazy thing was it was a home game for Alabama like it was like 90 percent red it's like I've never been to a major college football stadium where it was just like the opposite team flooded the stands I was just like wow Vanderbilt but yeah so I yeah. you know you also probably have a bunch of Alabama friends with you at that game because there's, I don't expect that there to be too much gold and black at that one I think I think Vanderbilt Stadium is is still under construction too I know last year it was a you know they hung the scoreboard from a crane so yeah I think it's, it's surely that much of use right I think that's that's got. I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. But uh, so you have that. So then you have Norman fifth. I do have Norman fifth. But we'll go to okay. your fourth. I'll do. I I'll just do Knoxville four. And I yeah, guess yeah. I, I'm so bad. Yeah. Well, you gotta have one. Everyone's gotta have a fifth. Here's where I'll go in on Knoxville. I've been to a Tennessee basketball game. I've never been to a football game. And so I think I will live to regret. I think the football games are way better. I did like Thompson Bowling Arena where the basketball team plays. I then went out in Knoxville a little bit. I didn't. I didn't. I like, like the little like square that they have. I didn't. I, I didn't. I don't think I. Oh, I did like the square. I did go to the square. Well, the, the square was bars and the yeah. I don't. I just know it as the that square. And then, then everyone's yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. You that like, was, I don't. I don't remember the name of it. I, I usually just that get was somebody that was nice drive me there. But yeah, I that think nice. not, I think Knoxville, and this is not going to be popular on an Alabama podcast, but I think Knoxville is <laughs> like one of my favorite places to go. 
Like it, like it's underrated. I think the river is kind of pretty during the day. There's a ton of hills, man. I, I feel like mm-hmm. if you go to Tennessee, you're probably like you might like lose the freshman 15 because it's like I feel like that whole stadium or like it feels like everywhere I walk is uphill yeah. <laughs> at that place. I feel like I've had to like park far away one time. I felt like I walked like, you know, they always joke like the uphill both ways. But like I feel like it was uphill like I feel like I was just like climbing a mountain. But, uh, uh, you know, um, I, I think it's great. I think it's a, it's a fun town. Um, I'll, I'll, say, good- I'll say this. This will be my caveat. What I will decide in this season is what I like better, Knoxville or Baton Rouge. And then we'll – or if I like oh, – if I turn out to like Baton Rouge. Oh, yeah, so like Baton Rouge is so much better. <laughs> like, or well, if so, Knoxville – Baton Rouge. I'll take that back. Baton Rouge is like an okay city. Like it's – I think the, the play, if you're doing this, guys – is to stay like somewhere in between New Orleans and Baton Rouge, and then like Friday night, go to New Orleans. Don't get too hungover to ruin your Saturday experience, but then <laughs> then go to to, yeah. LSU, to the night game. Yeah, normally it's, it's a night game, so like yeah, you can like like kind of like like party a little bit harder on Friday night in New Orleans, and then kind of use the rest of the. You know, early morning, Cover, Saturday, slowly but surely, it off, and then you're ready for to 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 go ramp it up again in in Tiger Stadium. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so, so I've Oklahoma never been at fifth. Well, I, I'll go yeah, last. I've never so been to Norman. I have Oklahoma at fifth. I've never been, and honestly, just the state of Oklahoma, I've driven through it, and it just kind of is boring. So I just put it last. That's there, there's process of elimination. There is the novelty. I'll give the counterpoint. Because I feel like we're both high, yeah. so obviously we're both not very high. Someone, the, someone's got to say something good. The counterpoint to it is like, it's not often that we get to go to to to, to the um, what is it? It's Memorial Stadium, and like that's one of the cathedrals um, of college football. You know, they they call it the Palace on the Plains. You know, it's like mm-hmm. um, I think it's what they call it. I hope that's what they call it because I don't want to trash Oklahoma any more than I have. Oh. But, I'll Google um, it, but keep, yeah, keep going. Yeah, so uh, you know, it's it's a historically big stadium. It's something like like I think a lot of Alabama fans would like want to cross off their list. But look, my argument to that is, if Oklahoma wants to be a part of the SEC, they're going to have to be started to treat like an SEC team. Wisconsin's not in the conference. If you don't go to this Wisconsin game, well, tough cookies. Like you might never get to go there again as an Alabama fan. But like mm-hmm. you hang with it long enough, you're going to get to go back. To, to Norman um, as an Alabama fan. And if you are a truly devout Alabama, all sports, not just a football only gump, um, I think you probably made the trip out to Oklahoma to go to the softball, you know, once, right? I mean, there's a lot of people that have done that. Alabama softball is always, uh, you know, maybe not this year, but, you know, they uh, they routinely make it to Oklahoma City. And, and the thing I have, a, my best friends from um or he, he lives in Oklahoma City and he went to OU. So he's not very happy with me putting them last. But the thing I will say is like the best parts of Oklahoma in that area is Oklahoma City. So if you have been to Oklahoma City, to, you know, maybe for Alabama softball, everything good over there is it's like all the Oklahoma City stuff is better than the Norman stuff. And they're like an hour away. So like, um, you probably like it, it kind of seems like oh yeah i have never done that i want to check it off your list like maybe you actually have like you know <laughs> maybe you've already been there and then second of all it's just it's i don't know i don't think norman's like anything to super write home about when it comes it's not i don't think it's necessarily something like a baton rouge or a madison or even a knoxville not a nashville uh yeah so like on this list of the towns it's not like as high up and honestly jack i'm not sure that game's gonna be that great um, mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I'm not sold on Oklahoma. You know, I think that they could be, I, I think Texas is going to come into the SEC and be pretty good right away. I mean, they're coming off of a playoff. So I think that they're going to have that success. And I think right now, like Texas is almost like the team you want to be in the SEC. They've got all the momentum and, um, it seems like they've got the NIL worked out for them. And like, it seems like that might be, you know, if you wanted to like buy stock in an SEC team, that might be your, your best bet. I don't know if Oklahoma has the, that same feel to it. I kind of feel like they're going to come in and they're going to realize like, oh crap, this isn't the big 12 anymore. Like we can't just like dominate this. Like, you know, like 
these smaller games on the schedule, these teams can beat it. Like Arkansas can beat us. You know, I'm not saying Arkansas will beat Oklahoma. I don't even remember if they play, but like, like I think I think this Oklahoma team's maybe in for a lot ruder awakening. Kind of have, you know, I kind of said that about LSU. I think even more so with Oklahoma. So not a great place, like other than football wise. I'm not even really trying to, to down Norman. Norman's fine, but it's just like your stereotypical like college town but like not in a like a elite way like some of the other ones are um mm. average team average matchup i just mm, that's why it's five for me but i can see where it'd be like number two or, or you know higher I, I don't i don't know how you'd put this at number one but you know maybe it is for someone you know and then none of these are really bad choices but um but that that's how it's I a beautiful thing about it. a list yeah yeah and yeah. look i'm wearing Fair like enough. a suit color right uh like it's i guess maroon, yeah. never mind yeah. I, look, i'm trying uh, Oklahoma. i'm trying to be like a little bit i, I just feel bad you, that we both put oklahoma last you were also uh you were close it's the palace on the prairie not the plains that's what i meant auburn's the plains yeah yep yep uh anyway right, yeah i think it yeah. was palace I'll take your word for it. We'll just have to see. That's that's the beauty of the list. So I guess, you know, if you're watching this, comment your top five, you know, away days, whether you've been there or not. If you're going to go to all the games, you know, maybe we'll maybe we'll revisit this after the season. We'll re-rank them. How about Watch, that? we're going to go and like how much is going to blow us like out of the water and like, we're just going to like love Norman. Something like crazy is going to happen there. It's going to be like our favorite trip. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, That's they, not gonna happen. I just wanted to say something extra nice about Oklahoma. We'll re rank. We'll re rank it after the, after the season, and then and then and then reevaluate, and then I don't know. Nashville gets a bonus because they'll be there again in the spring. But, uh, yeah, that'll that'll do it for the show this week. Hope everyone enjoyed. We'll be back uh, next Wednesday, and hopefully Mark Sears and Jaron Stevenson have made a decision by then. We have an extra talking point. Uh, but until then, everyone enjoy your week. Enjoy the tide. We'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs>